Hi, welcome back to my podcast, The Journey of a Researcher. I am your host, Dr. Kasturi Banerjee. Today's episode is part one of a two-part series on internships and fellowships. The reason I'm doing two parts because the basic definition of internship and fellowship I'm going to address in these two episodes. When I am talking about internships, these are summer program, short research project program that you are doing either at your home institute or in a different host host institute. Whereas fellowships are like the KBPY fellowship and other government aid that you can apply and get for that covers your education cost, your internship cost, etc, etc. So that will be done in the part two of this two part episode. Now in this episode, we are going to talk about three things. A. What is an internship and why you should do it. B. The benefits of doing a summer internship or a winter internship. Basically any kind of research internship. And the third is how to look for these internships. Okay, so let's start with the very first topic. What is a research internship? So technically, if you are doing a master's program or some or sometimes a bachelor program, usually in basic sciences and in some of the engineering MTech courses, you have to do like a six month project. Usually they are done in your home institute, whereas in some cases you have to do it in some other institute. A summer internship or winter internship is doing a research project only for two months or sometimes it can be like a month to eight weeks yeah so a summer research internship is basically you work in a lab under a mentor for a brief period of time it can be anywhere between four weeks to 12 weeks based on what kind of research internship you're going for and you learn about a field you're interested in or a field you're not sure about whether that's where your calling is. Now, internships can be paid or unpaid. It depends on what kind of internship you're doing. Mostly, if you are at any of the ICER Institute, you can do internships at your home institute as it is a requirement for availing the KPI scholarship or the Inspire Fellowship. So if you are someone who have either of those fellowships, you have to do internships every single summer as long as you have the said fellowship. And you can do it in respective ICERs. The similar case is for any institute that does research, you can do your summer internship in those research uh, places. Now, the question is, why should you do it? The way I approached summer research internship was basically using it as a tool to figure out which field I really didn't want to work on. As a student, when you are doing coursework when you are learning so many things in a semester and you have like so many different topics especially if you are studying in like an ISA system where you are learning developmental biology in one semester you are learning botany in the next semester you're learning microbiology in the uh, next fall or something like that like where you are not honing your skill in one specific field but you are kind of learning the entire repertoire of uh, information that's available in a big broad field or an area you don't know where you want to go ahead especially if you want to do phd you have to know 
which kind of programs you want to apply, which kind of department you should look for. So a research internship actually helps it. When I was at ICER, there were three fields I liked. I liked immunology, I liked uh, microbiology, and I liked developmental biology. But I didn't know which field I wanted to do my PhD on. So I did four research internships and one small workshop slash internship in my fifth year. So the four internship I did was kind of like in an elimination process. The first one I did was in developmental biology and I realized I cannot work with Drosophila melanogaster or for people who don't know the uh, scientific name it's the fruit flies it's those teeny weeny flies that sit on your bananas and your rotting fruits and are annoying in the kitchen table yeah those suckers please don't kill me i figured out i could not work with them they were too tiny and the amount of work you need to give in breeding them crossing them uh, isolating them, training them, whatever research you're doing, that is a lot of time commitment and the hours were ridiculous in trying to get a certain number of flies I had to work with. And I was like, I cannot work like this. This is not made for me. So props to people who work on fruit flies, but I was like eliminated. Developmental biology especially on fruit flies, is not my cup of tea. The second one I did was on protein biochemistry, and I liked it. It was something uh, very methodical. It was time-consuming, but I was doing more experiments, and it those experiments, the amount of time I was spending on each of them was something that I liked. And it was a very quick turnaround, so I could do like three experiments on a day and I'll be done with like five, six data in a week and be free for weekends. So I liked the kind of research I was doing and the time I had to spend and the complexity and stuff. I'm going to put uh, one thing in clear that the kind of research project you do in summer internships are not as intense or difficult as a PhD project is because your PI, whoever is going to work with you or you're going to work under, they know that you're here for like a month to two months. So they're going to not give you a Nobel Prize solving problem. They will give you a problem that probably somebody is facing in the project, but they cannot solve it. So you are that fresh pair of eyes that can actually provide a new viewpoint or maybe figure out what was not working. So summer internships or winter internships are usually projects that are at kind of lesser difficulty level versus what PhD or postdoc people are doing. So yeah, so the second internship I did, I liked it. And I was like, okay, I did not know I liked biochemistry and uh, molecular biology, but that can be a good option. So my third one was in um, bacterial genetics, which I liked a lot, though I didn't do really well with cloning, but I liked working with bacteria in general and like knowing about drug resistance and how it's uh, very difficult to treat them, you know, the concept behind why you need to study bacteria and like why they're still relevant and stuff like that. And then my, um, sorry, that was my fourth. My third was actually in immunology at uh, ISC Bangalore. And that's when I really realized that, okay, I actually love immunology. I mean, I have my own personal reason why I love this field to begin with. But after doing that summer internship, I was dead sure that this is where I wanted to work on if I ever stay in research and uh, expand my knowledge in. And that's the reason I did my master's project also in immunology. It ended up being my entire career field because my PhD had to do with immunology. My postdoc currently has to do with immunology. So 
since i used my internship opportunities as a yes and a no tool and to figure out where my love really um was and which field i really enjoyed and liked and wanted to work on and which field even though i loved learning about them in a theoretical way i really don't want to work there in a practical purposes i don't want to work with fruit flies i don't like certain stuffs i don't like bioinformatics i'm not a coder i don't understand coding so there are so many fields that i know i am not going to be good at i can work with experts of those said fields but me personally will really not do well if i do research in those fields so you can use these internship opportunities as your tool to figure out what you really like and where you want to go ahead with that i know some of my colleagues and some junior students they used the research internship opportunity to hone on their skill they just worked on one particular field on one particular topic and they worked in various labs they worked in iser they worked outside in a different indian institute some of them went abroad and that's what they did for their phd and that's what they are working today professionally either in a lab or in a company because that's what they really enjoyed to begin with and they just kept on leveling up their skills and knowledge to be 100% sure that exactly that's where they wanted to go so you can use this internship opportunities to be better at something you can either use it as an elimination tool or you can use it as something to make yourself better and that's the reason you should do internships pretty much that's the whole reason why you should do internships you will realize how different science is done at each individual lab no two labs are same no two pi's are same the environments are different and also interestingly uh for me i was anyway very shocked to learn when i joined i said that i can become a scientist like because i have no idea how to become one so i was introduced to this whole field in iser mohali when i joined but when i went and did the summer internship in isc bangalore in cdfd hyderabad i just realized that research was just not happening in selective places research is happening all across india in multiple universities in multiple research institute and there are special places that work on special problem before summer internship i didn't even knew there is a specific institute working on fingerprinting and cr- criminology and criminal sciences and stuff like that on forensic sciences so these are things that you don't learn if you don't look and apply for internships because you never know which field is actually your true calling well now we know why you should do internships let's talk about what do you learn from these internships how do you use these in your benefit as i already said you can use it either as an elimination tool or your gaining more expertise tool there are other things as well that happens when you're doing an internship first of all you network you meet people from all kind of places universities labs and fields of life you realize that each and every individual that are there present in the lab with you are there only because they love science they have a love for science irrespective of what background they are coming from or where they are coming from and that's very nice to know considering there are so many things that are happening in today's world you realize that there are so many i don't know like there are so many things happening in today's world where people tell you that you should not talk with this person you should not interact with this person this like 
you should be aware of these kind of person and it you you develop a prejudice you develop a psyche of having these stereotypes in your head and then you go to this university you go to a lab where you are the new person you have no idea what to do what to expect and then you start interacting with these other people and you're working you realize that oh my god they have the same passion as you they love science the same way as you and it doesn't really matter who they are how they are from where they come from because you all have found the common thing that holds you all together which is your love for science and i love that fact when i did internship the second thing in networking is you learn about different opportunities before doing my uh summer internship at iisc bangalore as well as cdfd i had no clue that there is actually an institute in india that specially trains people on forensic sciences i knew they will have to like do law courses or something to enter into the field of forensic science but there is actually a place where they train you how to do how to work with the biologics that you find in a crime scene how to extract dna how to fingerprint etc 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 even cdfd where i did my project on bacteria and trying to understand bacteria resistance acquirements and all those thing basically how bacteria becomes resistant to drugs and stuff like that there they had a dna fingerprinting facility where they were trying to track tiger population in india and they were using fingerprinting techniques or in tiger scales paw printing techniques to count all the different tiger species we like all the different genetic types we have for tigers that are surviving in different national forest in india and these are cool things to learn about i got to know about research institute that i didn't know existed before like i had an idea about ccmb and ncbs but i never knew about cdfd where i did my internship there are so many research institute in india one of them is nii which is national institute of immunology which is doing fantastic job in the field of immunology and i love immunology i was in chandigarh this institute is in delhi but i never knew about it so research internships helps you in connecting and networking with people who are coming from these different institute and maybe in one of these institute is your future dream that's where you probably going to do your phd or that's where you're going to get hired as a professor or a researcher or anything else that you really like to do also in some of the research internships they are done in collaboration with companies as far as i know i'm not 100% sure but as far as i know that there are internships for like engineering student that is done in a collaboration with google in collaboration with amazon where they where they provide opportunities for undergrad students either specializing in computer or maths or physics to go and do an internship in their office if you get that opportunity and you network well you have a foot in the door of getting hired in these companies so you can use your internship networking to get placed in the next phase of your life after you graduate or while looking for a job or getting some contacts to help you figure out is that the kind of lab you want to work in is that the kind of institute you want to go in so networking really helps and the third thing is this is something i've observed here in usa i would really like that to happen in india as well is school students high school students do summer internships in um, universities we have got couple of summer student high school student come in my present lab and they are getting exposed to how research is done how a scientist think how we address problem and stuff like that and it helps them to get placed in good institute because they help in bulking up their cv and stuff like that and 
the good thing is that while they are doing this, you are interacting with general public, I will say. These these students, they don't know as much as a bachelor's student will know or as much as a master's or a PhD person will know. They are just learning and have begun to understand the basic concepts of science. So you are increasing the spread of science. You are helping to build this scientific culture. You're helping in also gaining the skill of explaining science to someone. Like you, if you can explain your complicated research to a high school student, you are already miles ahead in competition because you have to do this every time you write a grant. You have to do this every time you have to lobby to a congress. You have to do this every time you have to explain your research to an interview panel which might have one scientist and rest all are from different field. So an internship opportunity if you are the one who's giving a training to a summer student you learn those skills of how to interact, how to engage, how to encourage and impress someone in the kind of work you are doing. So that's definitely something I really like about a research internship. And one of the things that I have really ripped benefits from when I did my internship was making connections with my future employers. When I did my short project slash workshop in Germany, I had the opportunity to meet a professor and I really liked her work on malaria. And that's something even people in India are having a problem with. And it's a big research and medical issue in India. So we were talking. She explained her work. I tried to give some ideas. And we had a mini interview session during my workshop training. And it was not in a formal setting because she was explaining how to do the assay and what to look for. And I was just a curious student who was trying to understand what she was doing, how she was doing it, and was getting excited and wanted to be a part of that. And that interaction really helped because two, three months later, when I started looking for options of where I wanted to do PhD and where I want to send out my application, I reached out to her and she remembered me from that interaction and she offered me a position if I choose to apply. So what was a two-week internship opportunity turned out to be a PhD opportunity for me. Yes, it's true that I came to US because I like the offer that I received from the university I finally generated my PhD from, but you can get such opportunity. So use these internship opportunity to find your potential employer, especially if you are someone who wants to do a PhD training after your bachelor's or master's. These opportunities help you to figure out what you want to do, what kind of specialization you want, which kind of institute you want to narrow down into. And if you meet a professor who is inspiring and whose work you love and you found a good connection with them and they are interested to hire you, even if you're connecting them like six months or seven months after you have completed an internship, you can still use this experience to get hired at their place and i have known that there are some people who actually have got recommendation letters from their summer internship pis to get placed in companies or good institute like an ivy league institute in usa or in other countries or even in india so doing an internship is just not you have to do it because you know you have this fellowship it helps you. It helps you learn. It helps you to understand how science is done, how different kind of science is done, what are the different thought processes or approaches of doing a research problem. You network, you make friends, you make contacts, you learn about your potential career choices, 
as well as places that you can apply for either for doing a PhD or going into companies. You can potentially meet your future employers. Maybe the person you're working with as a summer student is going to become your PI in four or five years down the lane or they can be a good recommendation letter source who writes such a fantastic letter for you that you get placed in a really good position at a company or at a job that you really like or enter into a college that you really wished to get uh, your education from. So the goal is to educate yourself during the internship and reap as much as you can through these experiences. I mean, why not? You have two months. Make an impact and make the most out of it. That simple. So big question is, which is the last question, how do you even know where to go for these research internships? And that's a very valid point because a lot of people don't know about them. They don't know that they even exist. The reason being is when we hear about internships, we only think about internships that engineering students are doing or medical students are doing because they are associated with the technical field. So anytime you talk about internship, it's usually associated with engineering field or in medical field. But there are summer research internships, research internships. Uh, the reason I'm saying mostly summer is because that's when most of the research internship opportunities happen. It's during the summer because every college is having the summer vacation and usually it goes anywhere between two months to three months. So that's when most of the university and research labs open their door to recruit summer students. And uh, as I said, some can be paid, some can be unpaid. You have to read the fine lines to figure it out. I'm going to suggest couple of them these are all paid internships these are the ones that i have applied or somebody i know have applied and got them i will upload a complete list of each and every one that i am specifying in this particular episode as well as drop down some links that you can look into and you can do your own research because there are like so many i can only put so many in a post so let's start with the kbpy internship this is the internship that every kbpy fellow has to do so if you are someone who got the kbpy scholarship you have to do a summer internship otherwise you lose the fellowship simple as that you can do your internship at your own institute or you can go and do it at ISC Bangalore or you can do it in any other institute. Since you're a KBPY fellow, you will get an internship fellowship as well as the additional amount to take care of your travel expenses and otherwise. It's the same case for Inspire Fellowship students. You can also do it in your, in your uh, parent institute as well as any other institute in India. Now, apart from these, there is the Indian Academy of Sciences Summer Research Program. It's, I think, IAS, INSA, and TSA, or TAS, yeah. So, it's Indian Academy of Sciences, Indian National Association of Sciences, and the Academy of Sciences of India. It's sponsored by three academic institutions and anybody is eligible to apply for them because they provide summer research internship to students who come from basic sciences as well as students who are coming from medical field and engineering field. They provide a research internship in more than 100 Indian institutes starting from IITs to ISC to ICER to CDFD to NCBS. The list is huge. So if you look for that summer fellowship, it's an excellent opportunity. It's paid. They pay for your summer internship. It's two months and you basically get to do your internship in a completely 
different institute than your parent institute and you learn a lot i loved my time at cdfd because i didn't know there was that institute and i loved to learn about all the kind of drug research microbiology research and as i said dna fingerprinting of tigers research was happening at that institute so it was a very very good opportunity that i uh, experienced then the second most competitive summer research fellowship program is organized by Jawaharlal Nehru Center for Advanced Scientific Research also known as JNCSR it's in Bangalore and it's mostly for basic science students but i believe if you are an engineering student working in this disciplinary field you can also apply for them that's a really nice program there are a bunch of summer programs organized by iits as well as icer you can go and look into their respective pages most of these internship opportunity enrollment starts somewhere in december or like early january because they let all the students know by march so that everybody knows what they're doing and where they're working during summer time as well as there are other institute like nit has their own summer research program as well as tata institute of fundamental research in mumbai have their visiting students research program so there are quite a couple of summer research internship program that you can do in india and they are organized by pioneering institute and they have really good program these are the ones that i mentioned are paid and they can be either paid as like lodging fooding as well as an additional stipend or they will probably just take care of your transport and lodging and food so be careful to read those things so that you know what to expect but they are worth it and i really enjoyed both my summer internship as an ias fellow as well as uh, my summer internship at iisc bangalore as a qppy fellow so that's the option you have if you want to do your summer research internship in india please know that most of these research internship program are offered to students who have at least completed their first year or in some cases they are open for students who are in third year and above so that will also help you in figuring out the kind of programs you want to apply for i remember i applied for ias uh, fellowship when i was in my uh, fourth year so that's when i did my ias fellowship because it's usually third year and above so please note that okay so what about doing research internships internationally there are a couple of programs that are paid where you can do internship in foreign countries and the sponsoring program or institute will take care of your expenses there are a couple that i would like to mention which are very well known the dard program this is an indo germany program and they have quite a lot of research opportunities where they have exchange students coming from germany to india and india to germany so they have wise program which is working internships in science and engineering as well as they have couple that are exclusive for engineering students and couple for just basic science and what you do is you apply for them and if you qualify you go as an exchange student so you go to a university and work in that university uh for two months and a student from that university comes to india and works in your parent institution so it's a very nice exchange program and i have had the opportunity to meet some of these why students who came from germany there are absolutely amazing people and it was a very nice experience interacting with them and learning the kind of scientific dialogue they have in their university in their lab and like what their vision is i remember i met someone who loved illustration but also 
loved imaging so his dream was to become like cover art artist for scientific journals where you could make different kind of illustration from the images that we produce through confocal microscopy or electro microscopy and likewise so i never knew that was a career option but that person is really thriving well doing that work so it's a very nice opportunity so apart from the dard program there is also the indo us program which is known as the indo us science and technology forum partnership also known as iustf partnership and in there if you look there are a couple of internship opportunity the one i know a couple of biology major student from isa mohali applied and went to was the khargobind khurana fellowship where if you are someone majoring in any field of biology or life sciences you can apply for it and if you qualify for that fellowship you go to usa and get trained in a field of biology there is also the rice program which is the research internships in science and engineering and it has been created to create unique opportunities for science technology engineering and medical students from the united states to undertake internships in national laboratories so this is a research internship program for anybody in usa if they want to work in india there is also the sn bose scholars program that is organized by the serb the dst government of india and the iustf partnership and university of wisconsin madison where the idea is to develop a dynamic and transformative student exchange program between premier institutions in india and united states it is an exchange program so you go to your wisconsin madison and get trained there and someone from that university comes to india and gets trained in india so there are such exchange programs that you can apply for which are paid as well as there is the mitax globaling this is available in canada and it is both an international research internship program it is open for undergraduate students and if you are selected you basically go to canada there is the charpak internship program in france as well as an indo brazil summer internship program i'm going to list all these internship programs and provide their links in my blog i have opened a blog for the podcast where i will be putting such informations that anybody can up- look into and find the necessary information so basically you can go to any institute in the entire world to get a first hand in person experience in doing a research on a topic that either you absolutely love and wanted to become an expertise or or you wanted to try and see and figure out whether you love it or not the options are unlimited but i will list some of them on my blog post for my international listeners of this podcast the organizations that are associated with india those same organizations will be associated with your own country and i'm pretty sure they have their own exchange program please look into those programs with your respective country as this will help you to also get some exposure both in your country as well as worldwide yup that is pretty much what i have to say and talk about internships why you should do it what you should learn from them and where to look for them and uh, the part 2 of the series will be talking about scholarships that you can apply in india 
to cover for your education that you're getting in India. And I will also talk about some of the fellowship program that are available for anybody in the world to either do master's or PhD in any institute like Fulbright scholarship and etc. So that everybody who is interested in learning and doing research can try for these and pursue their dream of becoming a researcher. Thank you for listening. Thank you for giving me valuable input. Please stay active on my Facebook page and keep on giving your suggestions and criticisms or topics that you want to talk about, learn about, or want me to figure out and find out information for you. I will share my blog website so that all the information is at one place. And I want to do this especially for my listeners who do not access Facebook at all. So now everything will be available for everybody and hopefully that helps. And uh, we'll see you the next time. Bye!